Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Okay, so today we are going to uh, start the topic of breathing movements. Okay, we have talked about respiration, we talked about gas exchange, okay, and now a breathing movements. Okay, I hope you understand the difference between respiration, gas exchange, and breathing movements. We will recap at the end of the chapter again. Okay, so breathing movements are the movements of body parts which help in the movement of the air in and out of the body in and out of the body and basically thorax and lungs okay thorax now today i have a lot of videos to show you guys okay because i want to show you breathing movements i don't know how many of you read this chapter from the book but whoever did did for their own good okay so they will be able to understand better thorax is that part of the body which is above the abdomen, okay, uh, uh, which is above the diaphragm, above the diaphragm. Basically, diaphragm is the partition between the thorax and the abdomen. I'll show you the pictures uh, later, but for now, just take my words for it. So diaphragm is uh, a muscular elastic uh, structure, um, and you know, it's a muscle. It's muscular and it's made up of elastic tissue and it is separating the thoracic cavity from the ab abdominal cavity. Cavity is a scientific name for space inside our body, okay? Lungs are the organs, you know, you know, they they take part in respiration. So basically these are the body parts that move, okay? And that enables the movement of air in and out. Now, before we go into the, uh, um, the movement of the, you know, air in and out, I have to talk a little about physics. You have to understand a little physics behind this, okay? Um, we know from the physics of fluid that fluid and fluid, what this word fluid is any matter that can flow, which includes gas and liquid. Of course, solid cannot flow, so we're not talking about solid here, okay? So gas and liquid. Fluid flows from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure, okay? Remember, all the systems try to balance. All the systems try to equalize, okay? So uh, 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 the reason why the fluid is flowing from a region of high pressure to low pressure is because it's trying to balance. It's trying to equalize. So this fluid flow will keep, will, will keep going until the pressure at the two sides is equal, okay? For as long as there is a pressure difference, the fluid will keep moving from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. Now, we have not done gas laws as yet. That will, that, that will inshallah, be our next uh, physics topic in the, in the next physics class. But for now, just understand, and this is common sense. I don't think it would be hard for you to understand that uh, as, the pre as the volume decreases, pressure increases. As the volume decreases, the pressure increases. So there is inverse proportionality. Inverse proportionality means that if one quantity decreases, the other increases. So they go the opposite directions. If this increases, this will decrease and so on and so forth. So they are always in opposite directions. So if you decrease the pressure, provided the temperature is constant, provided the temperature is constant and provided the mass of the gas that you're talking about or the mass of the fluid that you're talking about and we're talking about gas here is constant then this relationship is true right okay why is that why is that in simple terms in simple common sense if we try to understand intuitively is that pressure if you under uh, if you remember is force divided by area so it is force per unit area if you remember so greater the volume greater the volume that means a greater the area for the molecules to bang against you know to bump against and therefore uh, 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 the area would be higher and so pressure would be low you know the area of uh, the pressure would or the force would be distributed over a bigger area and so overall you would have less pressure the force would be divided over a bigger area and so remember for those of you who might not remember force over area. So when the volume increases, the area of the wall also increases if we're talking about a container. Okay. And in this case, in biology, we're talking about the thoracic cavity. 
So if the volume will increase, I'm talking about increase, if the volume will increase, that would mean the area is increasing. And if the area is increasing, that means the force is getting divided over a bigger area and that would mean decrease in pressure, right? Right, so you know you can understand that way. So that's why they are opposite. Their relationship is opposite to each other. Okay, so once you've understood this little physics here, and it's easier for you to understand why our body is behaving the way it is. Now, so this is, for example, the thoracic cavity. Okay, and this is the outside. This is the trachea, which is the inlet into the thoracic cavity. And this is the diaphragm. Okay, and this is a sideways view, you know, in anatomical terms, in medical terms, we call it lateral view. But if you don't know the meaning of this, no need to get scared. This just means you're looking from the side, you know, side view. This also in simple terms, it means side view. You're looking from the side, okay? So, so basically the, the air is moving between outside and inside. So that's what's going on, right? Now, when the pressure here is greater than pressure here. And what's the pressure outside? It's the atmospheric pressure, right? We all, all, we all have atmosphere above us. And so if we are at sea level, and I'm taking sea level at the, as the standard, then we have, we, uh, the outside pressure is atmospheric pressure. So if the pressure inside the thoracic cavity, okay, the space of the thorax is greater then the atmospheric pressure, then the fluid will go from a region of high pressure to low pressure, from a region of high pressure to low pressure, right? To equalize, okay? Or you can think of it as a squeezing out, okay? So just like, you know, when you squeeze a balloon, the air comes out through its mouth, right? So same way, uh, same thing is going on in, even in the case of balloon, because you, by squeezing, what are you doing? You are decreasing the volume. And by squeezing, you are decreasing the volume and therefore you are increasing the pressure. And so the fluid flows from a region of high pressure to lower pressure, okay? Now, if you want the air to go the other way, I mean, if you, wanna, if you want the air to go inside, the pressure inside the thoracic, now we cannot change the pressure outside, right? So only the pressure inside the thoracic cavity would go down, would go below the atmospheric pressure, below the atmospheric pressure. So then again, the fluid will be sucked in from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure. Or you can think of it another way that as the volume increases, okay, another thing, how can you decrease the pressure now? How can you decrease the pressure or how can you increase the pressure? By changing the volume, by changing the volume, of the thoracic cavity. So there will be some mobile parts, Allah has made mobile parts that move and therefore they increase or decrease the volume, which increase or decrease the pressure, okay? And that will decide the direction of the air flow. And the air will always flow from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure, okay? So, uh, this is easier to understand that during inhalation or inspiration, the pressure inside the thorax is lower than the atmospheric pressure, and so the air is sucked in. Or you can think of it this way, that as the volume increases of the thorax, the air from the outside rushes in to occupy the extra space. Is that making sense? I mean, you can take any uh, explanation, whatever you find easier, but this is the proper explanation. This is the physics behind it. This is what's going on, okay? So I would like it a lot if you understand it this way, okay? Which is the same thing, you know? We are saying the same thing in two different ways, same thing. So when the thoracic volume increases, the, the air from the outside rushes in through the trachea and the bronchi to occupy the extra space in the lungs, okay? So during inhalation, oh, by the way, inhalation, inspiration, same terms, same meanings, okay? So during inhalation, the pressure inside the thorax is below the atmospheric pressure, and during exhalation, the pressure inside the thorax is greater than the atmospheric pressure, okay? ATM stands for atmospheric, okay? I hope you understood this part. Okay, now, what are those parts of the thorax that move and which increase or decrease the volume. 
of the thorax. Now let's talk about now let's talk about the parts that can move and that can increase or decrease the volume of the thorax. Now this is a cross section. You know we know what a cross section is. For example, if this is the man. For example, if this is a man and we take a cross section of his thorax this way. Okay, if we cut the body somehow this way and we look at it from the top. Okay, if we look at it from the top, this is how the shape or the outline was going to look like. Okay, so this is, these are the front, this is the front and this is the back. Okay, this is the back and this is the front. Okay. At the front, we have this, and I'm going to show you videos and pictures, so it will, it will get clearer. But for now, bear with my diagram. So front has this bone sternum. Back has vertebral column. We all know what a vertebral column is, you know, our backbone, which enables us to bend down and get up back. And on the sides, we have ribs, okay? So this, these bones together, these bones together make a room. And in this room, we have very essential organs, vital for life, lungs, and then in the middle we have uh, heart, right? Lungs, and then in the middle we have heart. Heart uh, is in front of the trachea, okay, and behind the sternum, so somewhere here, okay. So this is, the, these are the sides and the back and the front of the thorax, okay? Now, in the ribs can move, sternum can move, but vertebral column cannot move. I mean, vertebral column can move. I mean, that's why we bend and we, we get back. Vertebral column moves with our movements, okay? Not due to breathing. I mean, vertebral column does not participate in breathing movements. This is what I mean to say. It does move, but not. it does not participate in breathing, okay? Very mildly, it might. You know, when you are taking deep inspiration, you might see, you know, the movement of the vertebral column, but uh, uh, this is not a major participant in the uh, movement of breathing. Okay, but ribs move and a sternum move. And remember, no bone can move on its own. It is the contraction of the muscles which are attached to them that cause their movement. Do you understand that? Moves, bones will, won't move on their own. It is the contraction and the relaxation of the muscles that are attached to them that cause their movement, okay? So these are the three parts of our body which primarily move and they cause the increase or decrease of the volume of the thoracic cavity. Uh, rib cages, sternum, and diaphragm. These are the three things. Now you might say maybe lungs, Maybe lungs, do you think lungs move? Do you guys think lungs move? Who's gonna answer? Yes, Sundas, you wanna answer? No, I don't think they move. Uh, no, Amna, this movement of air, I won't call it diffusion because it is assisted. Um, yeah, it is assisted due to the muscular movement. So I, I think this is a forced movement of air molecules and I don't think this is diffusion. Okay, Amina. Okay. Uh, yeah, lungs move, but do they move actively? Do they move actively? I don't think so. No, they don't move actively. What do I mean by active? What What do I mean by actively? Contracting and everything. Yeah, I mean, you know, contracting on their own. I mean, contracting using energy on their own. That's what I mean by uh, the active contraction. Okay, so lungs are made up of, again, um, you know, elastic fibers. So they just passively, uh, they, they, they just passively, they act like balloons. So they just passively get inflated and deflated due to the air entering and leaving. But there are no, I mean, they, there's no muscular contraction. There's no active muscular contraction going on within the lungs that will cause their a decrease or increase in size. So that is why I did not write lungs here. Okay, so these are the only three. And uh, uh, these two are bones, okay? And this is the muscle, this is a muscle. Okay, so this uh, contracts actively, okay? This is not 100% muscle. This also has fibrous tissue. This also has elastic tissue with it. Okay, that elastic t t t tissue 
gives it support. Um, and so I will show you, okay? And this muscle has three very vital organs sitting on it. This is the floor of the thoracic cavity. Diaphragm is the floor of the thoracic cavity and is the roof of the abdominal cavity. Let's look at this. You know, like, so diaphragm would be somewhere here. Diaphragm would be here. So it would be the floor of the thoracic cavity and the roof of the abdominal cavity. Okay. Okay. So, um, so we know this, that breathing in will cause, will be due to the decrease in pressure and that will be due to the increase in volume. Okay. So we know this. Breathing out is due to the increase in pressure that is caused by the decrease in volume and that will cause the contraction of the thorax. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about diaphragm. We have already talked a little about it. It is made up of muscles and elastic. And I will uh, just show you um, uh, the picture of diaphragm. It has a tendon at the center of it. It has three vital organs sitting on it. Those three vital organs are the two lungs and one heart. So, you know, two lungs, two lungs, and then the heart in the middle, all three are sitting on the diaphragm. Okay, and I will show you. Now, the diaphragm's movement is up and down. There's no sideways and there's no other sort of movement in the diaphragm. The diaphragm moves up and down. Remember, its mo downward movement is actually flattening, and that is active contraction, which requires energy. Active meaning requiring energy. So flattening is active. And of course, flattening does what? Flat, flattening increases the thoracic volume. How? Look at this. This is my diagram. I tried to make it. So this is the vertebral column. I hope you guys can see it. Okay, so this is the vertebral column. Okay, this, the, the, this is the lung. Okay, this is vertebral column. Okay, and so this is the diaphragm. Okay, so when the diaphragm flattens, you can see that this thing comes down. And so there is more room. Okay, so the volume, overall volume increases. The overall volume increases. So flattening of the diaphragm increases the volume and therefore decreases the pressure and therefore sucks in the air from outside right? The air rushes in, right? And this is due to the contraction of the diaphragmatic muscles, right? Now, relaxation is a passive recoiling of the diaphragm. Why am I using the word recoiling? Because remember, it had elastic fibers. It, ha it has elastic tissues. So just like elastic or spring, it can recoil, okay? It can recoil. And that recoiling causes the diaphragm to spring back to its original dome shape, to its original dome shape. So dome shape is its original shape. Contraction flattens it. Dome shape is its relaxed shape. Okay, when it's relaxed, it's dome shaped. Okay, so when it relaxes, it springs back to its dome shape. Okay, now, so these two are bones. This is a muscle. So we understand how this works. I mean, this is a muscle, it contracts. But which muscles are, re are responsible for moving these two bones, these two groups of bones? This is one bone, but this is a group of bones. Now, bones don't move on their own. They move due to the contraction of the muscles that are attached to these bones. And there are two muscle, two muscle groups which are involved in breathing movements. One is the intercostal muscles. The other is the diaphragm. Diaphragm, we have already discussed. Okay, intercostal. Inter means between. Costal is Latin for ribs. Okay, related to ribs. So between ribs. So these muscles are in between ribs. <clears throat> okay, now remember one thing. Muscles only contract. Muscles only contract and relax. They don't stretch or extend. Do you understand? When I was a student, I would make that mistake. I, I thought that, you know, maybe they can elongate as well. They can, you know, stretch or extend as well. No, they cannot. 
they can either contract and relax, okay? So, for example, if there are two bones, this is one bone, for example, this is an arm, okay? Uh, so this is the lower arm and this is the upper arm, okay? So this muscle is responsible for bringing the hand closer to the upper arm, right? If, for example, this muscle will pull it upwards, right? This muscle will pull it upwards, right? So this lower arm would move closer to the upper arm. But what causes a straightening? Do you think this muscle then, you know, stretches backwards? No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't stretch. All it does is it relaxes and relaxation will not cause a straightening. For straightening, we need another pair of muscle, another pair of muscle, which will pull it back. So now when this muscle contracts, it contracts this way. Okay, and so this will then straighten. So do you understand? So opposite movements are due to two uh, sets of muscles, but one muscle can only contract and relax and relaxation is passive uh, recoiling, okay? Contraction is the active, acting ligium, active contraction, okay? So, um, okay, another point that I wanna mention here is that in normal breathing, I'm talking about normal breathing, you know, like, like you and I are doing right now, we are sitting and we're just breathing quietly, right? Now, right now, during our quiet breathing, only the external intracostal and diaphragm are working. That's it. Okay. But if, for example, we are running, jogging, or we are taking deep breaths for any reason, exercise maybe, then we are, uh, no, not even talking. And talking, you don't, you are not uh, breathing that hard. So I think even during talking, these are the only two muscles. So if you're just sitting uh, calmly and just talking, so I think these are the only two muscles which participate, okay, in your breathing movements. The extra muscles, now we do have extra muscles and they do help us in breathing movements, but that is only when we are inspiring deeply, like we are inhaling deeply, okay, or we are forced breathing, okay. Um, and so exhalation is absolutely passive, but if you are carrying out forced exhalation, you know, like forced exhalation, you try to take all the air out of your thoracic cavity, then you get in your internal intracostal muscles to contract, as well as the abdominal wall muscles contract as well. Try doing it and see if you can feel your abdominal wall muscles contracting, okay? Try to exhale out with force, and see if your abdominal, if you can feel your abdominal muscles contracting. Can you see? <laughs> yeah, I just did it. So yeah, abdominal wall muscles contract if you exhale out with a lot of force. If you try to make sure that all the air is out of your thorax and that's where the abdominal wall muscles also contribute. Now, what do we mean by external and internal intracostal muscles? Now, intracostal muscles, there are three groups. I'll show you in the video. Intracostal muscles have three groups, external, uh, internal, and then the innermost, okay? Normally, it's the external intracostal muscles, normally. Only in forced expiration or exhalation do we have these internal intracostal muscles contracting. Now, the reason why different groups are uh, involved in different, in different uh, movements is because of the difference in their direction. They are directed or oriented in such a way, they are di directed in such a way uh, that the contraction of external intracostal muscles causes the outward, the outward, can you see the outward and the upward movement of the ribs. So the ribs move outwards and upwards. So that increases the diameter of the thoracic cavity. So again, that increases the, the a volume of the thoracic cavity. So flattening of the diaphragm increases the height maybe, right? Or the length or height, whatever you want to call it. And the outward and the upward movement of the ribs causes a widening of the thoracic cavity or you can see, say, enlargement of the diameter of the thoracic cavity. So this is a good diagram in your book. 
I would give reference to this diagram. So this, these solid lines are showing the passive position. And so when you're during inhalation or inspiration, can you see the rib has moved upward and a little outward, upward and a little outward. And that has moved the sternum as well. Now this front bone is the sternum. That has moved the sternum also upwards and outwards. Can you see? And the overall an increase in the volume of the thoracic cavity. Okay. Okay, so, okay, now I'll show you, let me check the chat window and then I'll show you videos and pictures and then we will do uh, end of chapter questions and as well as the DVD questions. Uh, diaphragm is the one which helps to move the lungs. Lungs cannot move because they are hanging balloons. Yes, okay, yeah, Maruj, you are correct. Uh, is diaphragm not flat? It is flat only when it is contracting, Nabil. A diaphragm is flat only when it is contracting. In its relaxed position, it is dome-shaped. But don't ribs also passively? No, ribs are moving due to the contraction of the intercostal muscles. And whenever you have muscular contraction, that's an active process. Whenever you have muscular contraction, that's an active process. So we cannot say that the ribs are moving passively. Okay. Uh, in exhalation, they recoil. I mean, their downward movement will be passive because that is due to the relaxation of the um, uh, intracostal muscles, but they're going up is an active process because that is due to the contraction of the external intracostal muscles, okay? And remember, the internal intracostal muscles must be bringing the ribs down, right? Because they are involved in forced exhalation, exhalation. So they must be decreasing the volume, right? I didn't understand till where you cut the person until cortex. Cortex. Okay, Noor Muhammad Khan, I'll unmute you so that you can exactly tell me what you did not understand. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, lungs move. Okay, okay. Uh, what is a sternum? Okay, I'll, sh I'll, sh I'll show you sternum. Amra Javed, I'll show you sternum in the pictures and in the, yes, I know you cannot understand this without the pictures. Sternum is the front bone. The front bone, uh, you can even, you know, feel it right on front of your chest. Okay, the solid bone that you feel in front of your chest. How does the diaphragm contract? Just like any muscle contracts, Fatima, just like any uh, muscle contracts, diaphragm contracts the same way, okay? And now I'm going to show you, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, can you share? Uh, share screen. So let's show them the pictures first in the folder. Yeah, these pictures. Yes. Are you sharing? Yes. Okay, first I'll show you the pictures. Okay. Okay, bear with me. It's taking so long to open. Yeah, okay, so now this is the superior view. What do I mean by superior view? The top view of the diaphragm. Let me enlarge it, can I enlarge it? Okay, I can enlarge it, right? Yes, okay, yeah. So this is the superior view, superior view meaning like, you know, we have taken out the lungs and the heart, okay? And you can see the, can you see my mouse? My hand, right? My mouse. These two are the places where the two lungs sit on the top of the diaphragm. These two are places where the two lungs sit on the top of the diaphragm. This place is where the heart sits. Okay, you don't have to learn the labelings and everything, but do understand these major points. Okay, the points that I'm mentioning. These two places are the places where the, lung, the two lungs sit. This place is where the heart sits. Okay, this is the top view of the diaphragm. So this is, I'm showing you the floor of the thoracic cavity. I'm showing you the floor of the thorax. Okay, this is the vertebral column. This is one of the vertebra, right? Okay, these are the ribs. 
And because this is a cross section, so you can see intracostal muscles in between the ribs. Can you appreciate these intracostal muscles in between the ribs? Right. Okay. So all you can see are, you know, the cut sections of uh, the muscles. You cannot see the picture. Oh, okay. Let's, let's share again. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Oh, you can't see. I can't see the image. Okay. I, okay. Okay. I'll try to share this again. Stop share and then share again. Share again. Can you see now? Can he see now? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Okay. So let me repeat. Okay. So I'm showing you the floor of the thoracic cavity. Okay. This is the floor of the thorax. Okay. This is the diaphragm. Okay. So this is, these are the places where the two lungs, now these are the places. Now I, I hope you can also follow my mouse, my cursor. Okay. So these are the, the two uh, spots where the two lungs sit on the diaphragm, right? And this spot is occupied by the heart, okay? So that's how it is, okay? So I am looking at the floor of the thorax. So this is like the cross section of a human body and I'm looking at the diaphragm from the top, okay? This is the vertebra at the back, okay? Can you see this is the vertebra? Can everybody see now? I hope everybody can see now. Let me just double check. Yes, okay, okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, so uh, this is the ver 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 vertebra and this bone here is the sternum, okay? This bone here is the sternum, somebody was asking, but I will show you a better picture. Okay, these are the ribs, these are the ribs and these are the intracostal muscles in between them, okay? I will show you better pictures, okay, next. This now is the inferior view. Inferior view meaning that I am showing you the roof of the abdomen, which again is the diaphragm, okay? Diaphragm is the roof of the abdomen. So we are looking at the diaphragm from below. We are looking at the diaphragm from below. I hope you're understanding me, okay? So this hole here is for uh, inferior vena cava inferior vena cava which is coming down from the heart remember this hole here is for the esophagus okay where the esophagus joins the stomach this hole here is for the aorta right as you can see the aorta okay by the way these pictures i got from frank h netter atlas okay of medicine which is used in uh, medicine anatomy okay let me Okay, let me go to the next picture. Okay, now these are the boundaries of the thorax, okay? This is the, the upper boundary of the thoracic cavity. And this bone here is in layman terms is called the collarbone. Its medical term is different, but you don't need to know it. This is the collarbone, you know? Collarbone that you can feel, that you can feel just behind your collar, that bone is this. Okay, we call it collarbone. This front bone is the sternum. Okay, this front bone is the sternum. So, so I was first showing you the cross section. This is the cross section, okay? Please follow my cursor. This is the cross section. So again, you can see the sternum at the front, vertebra at the back, okay? These are ribs, on the sides are ribs, okay? These are the spots for lungs. These are the two pink lungs. And this is the place for the heart, okay? And this is the sternum, okay? So the roof, I mean, the upper boundary is the collarbone. The lower boundary is the diaphragm. Can you see? The diaphragm is attached to the vertebrae all the way down here. And I will show you its front view, okay? And in the front, it is attached to the sternum. At the front, it is attached to the sternum. At the back, it is attached to the vertebrae all the way down here. So this is the floor of the thoracic cavity. This is where the heart and the lungs are, okay? This, this part here, okay. Next picture. So can you see the vertebral column is at the back? It, it forms the back wall of the thoracic cavity. Front wall, sternum, up, co collarbone, down, uh, diaphragm, okay? So you should know these boundaries. That will help you in understanding. Okay. 
yeah this is a 3d model <clears throat> 3d model of the thoracic cavity okay uh, 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 only the bones are showing so you can see the ribs attaching to the sternum in the front okay and at the back they are attaching to the vertebral column but in this particular model they have uh, not shown the vertebral column. In this particular picture, they are not showing the vertebral column, but at the back, they are attached to the vertebral column. At the front, they are attached to the sternum. Okay. Now, this is the thoracic wall from the inside. Okay. This is, so you're looking at the back side of the sternum. Are you understanding me? So you're looking at the back side of the sternum. You're looking at the back side of the ribs. You're looking at the back side of the intracostal muscles. Can you see? Right. So this is the diaphragm. Can you, can you please follow my cursor? I am outlining the diaphragm. Okay, this is the diaphragm. So this, so the cavity above it will be thoracic cavity and the cavity below it will be the abdominal cavity. So right below the diaphragm, what do we have? What do we have right below the diaphragm? Stomach stomach, liver, yeah, all the abdominal organs, right, okay. Let's move on. Okay, so this picture here is also very helpful. I'm gonna enlarge a little bit. Yes, okay. So can you see the, the two lungs have been moved apart so that you can have a better look at the heart? Okay, so this is the heart. So can you see how the three organs are sitting on the diaphragm? Can you now appreciate, now heart, it's not moving. Okay, can you see the heart sitting on the diaphragm and then the two lungs are sitting on uh, the diaphragm and then you can see the ribs. Okay, so that's how they are arranged. Let's move, okay. Uh, we'll do these questions later at the end. Now, I also want to show you these intracostal muscles. So these are the three groups of intracostal muscles that I was talking about. External intracostal muscles, internal intracostal muscles, and the innermost intracostal muscles. Okay, so look at how they are in different directions. Okay, external intracostal is going, you know, from down, sideways, and upwards. Internal intracostals is going towards the middle, towards the medial side and upwards, okay? And in innermost intracostal are straight. Now, due to the difference in their directions, they are causing different movements. Their contraction causes different movements. So let's revise. External intracostal muscles participate in? Sundos? Come on. Say it. Forced breathing. Forced breathing? Why don't you know? Normal breathing, normal breathing, they contract along with the diaphragm, simple. Normal breathing, external intracostal plus the diaphragm. When do the internal intracostal muscles uh, act? That's in forced. Huh? That's in forced. Forced what? Inspiration or expiration? Forced uh, exhalation. Exhalation, thank you very much. Yes, external is a normal uh, breathing. Good job, Amra Javed. Yes, inhaling, yes. Now, we are not talking about kidneys here, Noor Muhammad Khan. We are talking about the thorax. Kidneys are not in thorax. Kidneys are in the abdomen, okay? And kidneys are not right below the diaphragm. They are not right below the diaphragm, okay? Uh, can you show a GIF of the, yes, I will, I will. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh, today is the day for videos and pictures. So enjoy, okay. So this is this is the side view. Turn on the AC. Okay. This is the side view of the thoracic cavity, thoracic wall. Okay. So I got these pictures from my atlas. I'm sure. I'm, I hope they are a little clear. Okay. So these are extra muscles. These are extra muscles which help us in other movements as well as forced breathing but normally it is the, ex the external intracostal muscles which participate. So I'm repeating it again and again so that you learn it because it's important for you to learn this fact that external intracostal muscles take participate in no uh, normal 
inhalation, inhalation along with diaphragm. So diaphragm and external intercostal muscles. So these are extra muscles, but they also participate. I'll show you a video, but uh, they participate only in forced inhalation, forced. Okay, this is the sternum again. This is the collarbone again. Okay, okay. Okay, so these are not, okay, that's it. Stop sharing. Now I wanna share the videos. I wanna show the videos. Okay, the videos are scanned, right? No, they're completely, completely websites. Okay, no, that, that 3D, the 3D thing. Yeah, okay, bear with me. It's taking some time. So now I'll again show you a 3D uh, image of the thoracic cavity so that it's... Uh, Rafi Abdul Rahman, your video is showing. Is it connected? What? No connections are available. What? Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, this is a website. I found it very helpful. It shows. How do I scroll down? Okay. Yeah, can you see the screen share? But there's no 3D showing here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's taking a bit longer. Okay, okay. Yes, Amra Javed, yes. The innermost intracostal muscles, uh, they uh, participate in forced exhalation. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Let's move on to this. Okay. So uh, this, this is the trachea. Remember, I, sh I think I showed this to you before as well. So I found it helpful even now. So let me, okay, let me. So I'm removing the layers. So this is a, in this website, we are, I can remove the layers and I can see, but you know, I don't know, it's very slow right now. Yeah, maybe because of the meeting. Okay, just leave this website. Let's move on. It's taking a bit. Okay. What is this? It's not opening. Yeah, just a second. This website is opening. I don't know why it's taking so long. No, well, it's not. Website me for you there. Huh? Because of the meeting? Yeah. Okay, then you know what? Uh, it, this is wasting. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, now this is this is a demo of how the thoracic cavity moves during breathing. Okay. So let's watch this. So you can see the diaphragm moving up and down. So you can see the diaphragm moving up and down. Okay, so when it is flattening, that's active contraction. And when it's relaxed, it, it springs back to its dome shape. So that's how the height of the thoracic cavity decreases and increases. Okay, so that's how the, the diaphragm separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. Okay, ab abdomen is below the diaphragm. Okay, thorax is above the diaphragm. 
And can you see the movement of the ribs? It's outwards and upwards. And can you see the vertebral column is not moving? Okay, the vertebral column is not moving. The sternum is moving forward. The sternum is moving forward and outwards. Okay, but you can see that the vertebral column is not moving. Okay, so now they're showing the diaphragm from, the, from below. So you can see the two openings. In fact, three openings. The, the two openings are for inferior vena cava. This one is for inferior vena cava. This one is for uh, the esophagus. Okay, let's move on. So thank God that this showed. So let me close this. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Can you see the? Can you see the videos that I'm showing? No, diaphragm is not hollow, beta. Di diaphragm is a muscular sheet. It's a muscular sheet. Okay. Now again, okay. Pay attention to this video. Here. Okay, now they are showing forced breathing. This is forced um, uh, inhalation. Okay, they're showing forced inhalation, but nevertheless, it's a good, a useful uh, vivid video. So can you see now these extra muscles are helping in forced breathing, these extra muscles are helping in uh, moving the ribs outward and upwards. Can you see how this muscle is contracting? Follow my cursor. Okay, now this muscle, will be contracting and therefore pulling the sternum outward and upward. Okay, so these are extra muscles which participate only in forced breathing, in quiet breathing. Now these are the intercostal. These green, sorry, the red ones are external intercostal. The green ones are internal intercostals. Okay, the green are external. The, uh, sorry, the red, red are external. The green are internal. Also look at the diaphragm, the movement of the diaphragm, up and down, up and down, okay? and uh, appreciate the movement of the ribs outwards and upwards, outwards and upwards, and therefore increasing and decreasing the volume of the thoracic cavity. And can you see the vertebral column is not moving, okay? And how the posterior, I mean, the back ends of the ribs are attached to the vertebral column. At the back, the ribs are attached to the vertebral column, and at the front, they are attached to the sternum. And so, and so in the front, the bone that the ribs are attached to is the sternum, okay? So they are naming the different muscles which participate in forced inhalation, okay? Uh, okay, so they are just showing. So let's just, let's just move on. So these are the different, so yeah, they are uh, explaining the movement of ribs with the help of this handle of the bucket. So can you see just like the handle of the bucket, when you move it, it moves outwards and upwards. Same way rib cage moves, the, the rib cages, the rib cage moves the same way. Okay. So I will close this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now I got this intercostal muscles. This is again, I'm trying to show you the intercostal muscles. Okay. Can you see? I hope you can see now these external, this is the external intercostal muscles, the, the highlighted ones. And these are the internal intercostal muscles. Yeah, these are internal intercostal and those are external. Let me remove the layers. Uh, it's not responding, you know, as it would respond. It's not responding during the meeting. Okay, that's fine. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let me in the meanwhile check your, all this must be happening as we speak, right? Yes, yes, that's right, Shamim. All this is happening as we are speaking right now. Yes. Uh, what is the big purple muscle called? Yeah, you don't need to know the names of all the muscles. You don't need to know the names of all the muscles. All you need to know is external and internal. That's it. External in normal uh, inhalation and internal in forced exhalation. No, 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 but I don't want this. I didn't do this. This is a quiz. I don't want it. I will just leave it now. I had a video there. Oh, okay. 
ओके okay. ये इसको हटा दो मेरे से मत लो ओके ओके सो दे हैव रिमूव द लेयर्स सी नाउ यू कैन सी द इंटरनल इंट्रोकॉस्टल्स आई एम आई एम रिमूविंग द लेयर्स ओके सो दैट्स इट देयर इज नथिंग मच टू शो इन दिस miss what about the questions there are only 10 minutes left yes okay yeah don't worry there are only two questions yeah there are only two questions and they are easy can you see my camera when you know, while this website is uploading why don't we do the questions from the okay it's here okay yeah so the, this the, this is how the diaphragm is okay again i'm showing the same thing again and again okay uh to give you different you know views okay so this is how it is okay this is the inferior view of the diaphragm okay that's it Okay, that's it. Okay, how do I move this away? I mean, it's going to just like you. Okay, 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 okay. Ye mein baad nahi dikhungi. Ye maine bhi nahi dikhana. Okay. Now I want to go back to uh, the folder. I want to go back to the folder and do those questions. Okay, new share folder. Ye raha. Ye hai folder. Ye, ye, ye hai na. Please hurry up! Only ten minutes are left. Okay, these are the two questions. Let's do them. Okay, copy and complete this table to summarize what happens during breathing. External intercostal muscles breathing in. Yeah, can you see this? Yeah, you can't see it. Um. you cannot see it i can't see your image oh okay okay stop share share again stop share and share again okay now can you see okay okay hania okay thank you very much okay so copy and complete this okay copy and complete this table to summarize what happens during breathing external intercostal muscles breathing in do they contract or not tell me yes they contract and breathing out no they don't contract okay diaphragm muscles they contract during breathing in yes right and breathing out no right volume of thorax what happens during breathing in it increases or decreases these are the end of chapter questions uh so you can take out the page it's page 151 okay page 151 okay so yeah what volume in breathing in increases and in breathing out it decreases okay pressure in lungs during breathing in the pressure in lungs decreases because the fluid has to get in so from higher pressure to lower pressure so decreases breathing out pressure increases okay so we have done this and then now the next question okay what happens when you breathe out diaphragm muscles and external intercostal muscles both contract b diaphragm muscles and external intercostal muscles both relax <clears throat> please shut your video shamim your video is on please turn off your video thank you okay so they are asking about breathing out okay so breathing out you don't have contraction and they are asking for normal breathing out 
So diaphragm muscles and external intracostal muscles both relax. Diaphragm muscles contract and external intracostal muscles relax. Diaphragm muscles relax and external intracostal muscles contract. So which one is correct? Uh, diaphragm muscles. Now, di okay, now let's see. Now they cannot, nothing contracts when you breathe out and they're asking for normal breathing out. So nothing contracts, so A cannot be correct. Okay, B can be correct. Yes, diaphragm muscles and external intercostal muscles both relax, yes. Because external, yeah. So it's B, okay? C, why is C wrong? Diaphragm muscles contract? No, diaphragm does not contract while breathing out. So that's wrong. D, diaphragm muscles relax and external intercostal muscles contract. So that is wrong because no muscle contracts during breathing out. So, okay. So now I have just one very, uh, yeah. And also I wanted to share the DVD with you. Do we have five minutes? Yeah, the DVD activity. Now, one of the activities in DVD is to examine the lungs. So I got this video. I wanted you to examine the real lungs. Okay, so we have YouTube. So let's make use of this. Uh, new share. New stop share. Karo. Stop share. Okay. Yeah, this one. Yeah, okay. So I'm sharing this video. These are a group of students in um, St. Moore International School. I don't know how to pronounce the name. Okay, so they are observing lungs. So I thought of sharing this with you guys. So can you see the lung getting inflated? They, ha they have put a tube through the trachea and they are inflating it with, with air. Okay. Can you see one of the students is, uh, is blowing in the lungs? Okay, so can, you can see now, and appreciate the color, appreciate the shiny texture and how spongy it is, how soft it is. Now the pink color is due to what? Now they are cutting the inside of the lungs. Okay, now she's trying to cut a, um, following the bronchioles. Can you see the bronchioles? These bronchioles are real cool. Okay, and they will also now blow into these bronchioles and you can see the alveoli. You can see the alveoli inflating. Can, can you see that balloon-like balloon -like, uh, swelling? Now you'll, you'll see. Now all, all these tiny holes you can see are all bronchioles. Okay, this is how a lung looks like from inside. So you, all these holes are bronchioles that you can see. All these holes are bronchioles. And now this, is a, this was an alveoli. This is an alveoli inflating. Okay, what is a pleura? Pleura is a protective membrane on the outer surface of the lung. So the shiny appearance is due to this transparent membrane called pleura. Okay, that shiny membrane is called pleura. Okay, now this student is blowing in through the bronchioles and so you can see the lung inflating. Okay, so I found this really helpful. So thought of sharing with you guys. Okay, so um, yes. Yes, these are real lungs. Yes, these are real lungs. Yeah, so muscles, they only have elastic fibers and you know, they just uh, uh, get inflated and deflated real quick. Okay, uh, can I show, can I now share, now stop this share and now real quick in the last four minutes or whatever I have. Okay. Uh, Okay, gas exchange, okay, activity 11.7, 11.7. Okay, I just want to show you two activities which are in the DVD of this book real quick. Okay, those of you who want to leave can leave, but these are two activities that I want to share, I want to share with you guys. Okay, now this activity I got from the DVD, okay. So uh, this is an apparatus, okay, potassium hydroxide solution. So we have three conical flasks and this jar with the respiring or a live mouse in it, a living mouse in it, okay? Now potassium hydroxide solution is on the left conical flask and potassium hydroxide's job here is to absorb carbon dioxide. Lime water, you all know, goes milky when carbon dioxide is present in it. So 
these questions. So watch what happens when the pump is turned on to draw air through the apparatus. Pump air, meaning you know, air is inserted through this tube and then eventually it gets out through this tube. Okay, follow my cursor. Oh, they cannot see? Oh my God. You know, the cell phone was much better. Huh? Stop share and share again. Yeah. No, oh, no, no, no. Not this. No, no. Not this. This is this. This. Okay, maybe we can do this in the next class. Okay? So, yeah, because, you know, we are having problem here. So, okay. I'm trying to share this. Now, can you see? Go, go and check if they can see. Can you see this now? Okay, otherwise I will just end the meeting and we can do this in the next class. Okay, I think we'll do this in the next class, okay? Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.